I don't know, know what Taylor we're doing knows in this, her host. this week. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I, Josh kind of threw me for a loop here. Welcome back to the Quad Down Pod. I'm your host, Flight of Taylor, here with, of course, Josh from Station Weight. How are you today, Josh? I miss Larry. I do miss Larry as well. Besides that, I'm good. Um... Lots of news this week. I don't actually want to talk about myself too much because we specifically this week we haven't been here for a month. You know, you promised we weren't gonna skip another month, and then we <sighs> immediately skipped another month. And then yeah, that was actually really funny. Oops. I told you it was gonna happen. Anyway. Yeah, I feel like you did it to spite me. I mean No we've had you know? very valid reasons. <laughs> we've uh we've all been dying is the short answer. Um Yeah. Well, anyway, I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about this first change on our docket here because I have something kind of funny to, not really funny, kind of, yeah. Well, yeah, talk. Well, so there was a merger, Josh. Did you know about the merger that nobody <laughs> shut up about for the last eighteen months? I think our last episode was when the merger went through. I think it was. So, um, with this, immediately Six Flags adopted a chaperone policy, the one that. Cedar Fair has been using since last summer. I haven't seen if that's coming to Darien Lake or not. I've seen it at a bunch of the parks, but not at all of the parks. I'm it. I'm going to assume eventually it'll be all of the parks. But I still think it's funny that Twitter.com directs you to X.com. I do think that's funny also. Um, but today, that changed again. At least at Kings Island, where if you are 15 or younger, you ma- now must be accompanied at all times by your parent or guardian or whoever you're there with that is over the age of 21. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If, if they, we'll see if they actually um, uphold that, I mean. Yeah. I feel because... like it's going to be a little hard, but also I'm not against it because... I'm not against it either. I'm more like, um, I, I feel really like funny. you should not be able to hold on to as many kids as they let you. Why my, can one person monitor 10 kids? That's too many kids. My big question is like, um, if, so let's say I have children. I do not. Um, let's say I have children and they want to go ride Mystic Timbers and I don't want to ride Mystic Timbers. Do I have to just stand in line with them and then cross the platform when it's time? I'm going to assume like that's how that goes. I think hypothetically, and it wouldn't be a big deal, but that would technically slow down operations because you'd, the sorter, the sorter would have to know like, oh, I'm not riding. I'm just supervising this group. And then, you know, all that junk. Yeah, that's a good question. Because that doesn't prevent line jumping if you're like, no, your parent doesn't have to go into line with you. Which is, like, one of the big problems. I, um, just want to point out real quick, total side tangent, but I opened Chrome on my station weight profile, and Mm -hmm. then somebody commented on a video that I did a while ago comparing Kings Island to Cedar Point. Like, which park is better? First sentence. I've never been to Cedar Point, but I have been to Kings Island. They're both fantastic parks. How do you know, buddy? (laughs) How do you know? What? You've never been. I don't even remember why. Oh, I was going to Twitter to see what parks have enacted this uh, chaperone policy. Um, I know at least Six Flags over Georgia, right? That makes sense. They had that big fight uh, last month, two months ago. Somewhere. This summer's kind of been lying by. It's a bit... we had summer interns at my job, and they I remember the day they started, and today was their last day. So it's That's like, wild. I know. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, Darian Lake didn't have the policy. That's all I was really looking for. Okay. In other um, news... Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was just going to go into... Um, we got some pass announcements as well. Yes, pass announcements. Um, I know a while ago it was leaked that you wouldn't get into Cedar Fair Parks with your Six Flags Pass next year. And that that we have now had confirmation that you will get into the Six Flags Park with your Cedar Fair Pass. However, it will only work after January 6th. 
And you can't use Cedar Fair Pass add-ons at Six Flags Parks or vice versa. So your Cedar Fair Pass is good for That's a mission and parking. What? It says. what? That is mostly it's what a... it says. No, it and this I had a tweet about this. It does not say Okay, so the original question I brought up was if I buy a Cedar Fair Legacy Pass, can I then buy or if I buy a Six Flags Legacy Pass, can I then add a Cedar Fair Legacy dining plan to it after. And a bunch of people kept telling me, no, it says you can't. But it doesn't. What the fine print says is add-ons bought at time of purchase with your pass will not work. It does not say you can't buy them later. Which is what I care about. Because I only usually buy a Cedar Fair dining pass, but I would like to buy a Darien Lake Home Park pass and then add a Cedar Point or a Cedar Fair dining pass onto it, if possible. How is this correcting what I said? Because you said that none of your ad- none of your add-ons will work, and I'm saying it doesn't oh, say that. No, it says but I meant for like the buy- Legacy Park. Like if you bought a Cedar Fair dining pass with a Cedar Fair pass, okay, you're like being more specific than I was. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I figured you would go into your can I mix and match anyway. Yeah, it's which I personally think is a dumb opportunity for it not to work that way. I think because, that would make sense. Because otherwise you're still forcing people to buy two passes, which... Maybe that's secretly what they want. Maybe. Which I think's dumb, <laughs> and people are just not going to um, go to one chain. My other thing about this is... who? What executive looked at a calendar and said, I know... Let's do this on January 6th, right after the next election that's inherently controversial. Because that day might not be a a day in history or anything. Yikes. Yeah. I thought originally it said January 1st, and then I started seeing January 6th all over the place. No, I, I know why they did the 6th. It's because all the other passes expire on the 5th, like the 2024 passes. Because remember, they used to be the first, and then this year it got pushed to the fifth for some reason. Oh, so my people King's thought Island maybe Winterfest still says the first. I know Knots got pushed to the fifth. I thought Canada's Wonderland did as well. I know um, my King's Island pass said the fifth, but then it went back to saying the first. Oh no, mine oh, says December thirty first. So who knows? I, well, I have a small tidbit of news that's not on our docket here that could play into that. Which is Hollow Weekends at Cedar Point and Kings Island, or Haunt and Hollow Weekends, got extended by one weekend. It now I runs to November that. 2nd at both parks. So I'm wondering if maybe in order to line up with that 20 or January 5th, they add another weekend of um, Winterfest. That would be cool. Uh, see, yeah, I, I think that would work. Make it line up a little better. When is January 6th? Like, what day of the, the week f- is that? Monday. So okay. January yeah. 5th would be the last day. Okay, that makes sense. Being a Monday, yeah, that works. And it's it works well because um, <clears throat> Winterfest, if it runs up through New Year's Eve, it would be a Tuesday night, and that's just kind of awkward. That is kind of awkward. So might as well just run it through the end of, yeah. Anyway. And the end of the week. Uh, but speaking of next year, it's announcement season, baby! I want to jam something in now. Okay. That's not until the end of our doc. Um, since we're talking about season passes right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, King's Island passes went on sale today because they had their announcement. We'll, we'll come back to what their announcement was. Anyway, their season passes went on sale. And if you buy your season pass by August 11th, you get perks. Um, you'll get a five single use fast lanes. Baby. Five single use fast lanes, and I think a bring a friend if you're renewing. But only if you're renewing, you get a bring a friend. Josh can correct me on that. While, yeah. Um. Anyway, say five single use fast lanes. And last year when they switched to single use fast lanes instead of an all day band, you could only get one per day. So I never ended up using mine. Um, or all of mine, or whatever. But, this year, you could use all five in one day if you really wanted to. I think people were really mad about only getting to use one a day last year. 
because once weekly ops or weekday ops stop, it's kind of hard to get to the park for some people. Yes, you get um one single or for renewal pass holders at gold and prestige level, you get one free fall bring a friend ticket and five free fall single use fast lanes to be used between today and the 27th, which is weird because haunt ends the second. That is weird. Oh, and you can't also use say, your bring a friend on Saturdays, I think. I was going to say, it excludes Saturdays in September and October. Interesting. But I feel so, like that's always been the case. Because everybody's like, don't yeah, use your bring a yes. friend on yes. the last Haunt. weekday operation. Because everybody yes. does. Exactly. Um, but the more interesting tidbit here is, in previous years, when you buy a 2025 drink plan or meal plan... You can't use it until 2025. This year, if you don't already have a drink or meal plan, you can go ahead and use it this year. Which, I've never, uh, that's not true. Once, I've had them deny me my next year's drink plan. Um, Really? I only tried it one year because my first year buying passes, I had the souvenir cup. And I quickly realized that's ass. Next year, I'm doing the paper cup plan. So, when I went back after renewal, I just kept showing them my paper cup plan, and I only got denied for it once. So, but now it's official; you can use it. You don't have to try and slide it past anybody. Or I think the bigger thing was the meal plan, because I feel like drinks are kind of. Eh. That's but fair. I think the only thing that doesn't work for next year, if you buy for this year, is fast lane. That makes sense. Um, everything else should work. I know I saw fun picks and all that. So let's that's talk fun. about some 2025 news. Fine, I was getting there. I want which, to do which part do you want to start with, Josh? I'll let you pick the part. Um, let's talk about the uh, KI stuff first, since we just talked about their passes. Good idea. All right, so. It's been speculated for the last oh, couple hey. of years that okay. what Canada's Wonderland app just told me if I renew my pass that I can get five free single use fast lanes. Whoa! <laughs> Which means I'm about to get a Carowinds notification, a Cedar Point notification, a Dorney Park notification, and a Kings Island notification. Ooh. Oh yeah, Dorney's went on sale today too. I think, but they they're a full all... day wristband. What fast pass? Yeah, at interesting. Dorney. And they don't have Fastlane Plus at that park, do they? No, it's just Fastlane at that park. That's a good deal. It is a good deal. Um. Anyway. Kings Island. Kings Island. It's been since 2016, since the water park last got an addition. So it's been the speculation for the last couple of years that this year would be water park. And guess what? It was the water park. Woo! What did it get in 2016? Um, Tropical Plunge. I think it's the drop slides. That makes sense. I don't remember precisely because I'm not a huge water park person, but that's like because yeah. disabled and not anything. I also against don't water parks. love the idea of being wet all day. Like, like some people will do water park and then dry park. I could not and... mix and match. Mix and match yeah, exactly. would drive me nuts. I need, I need to be either wet or dry congruently all day, like in the water park or the dry park. I'm getting okay with doing, like, log flumes and stuff, but I'm still, like, you have to catch me on a good day. Someone, um, in the comments, find the video, I think Larry tweeted it, of me and my wife after we rode, um, Charlie Brown Log Flume, which has changed names since then, at KI opening weekend last year, or whenever that was. We were soaked. Ooh, I got so oh. soaked on that not. I got soaked on Diamondback the other day, and I was like... Oh, I always get soaked on Diamondback. No, but anyway, like I wrote River it the Racers. day before. Yes, anyway, River Racers. So, they got a water coaster, a Master Blaster water coaster, it, but not just a water coaster, it's a dueling water coaster, so you can race your friends at the water park. It's Ohio's first and only dual racing water coaster. You will it's... race side by side rafts down a thirty-three foot, forty-seven degree first drop at thirty miles per hour. Um, there will be twists and turns and a high banking slingshot with a final mega drop before Christ crossing the finish line. 
no offense, Chad, I love your work and you're a great person. If it's the only water coaster in Ohio, do you have to preface it with the first dual racing water coaster? Um, yes, because that makes it sound cooler. Okay. Oh, the total height is 48 foot. Oh, but the drop is only 33. I was Orion trying to see if there was a syndrome. height or anything listed yet. Um, <clears throat> That's not all they're getting, though. Not just a slide. They're getting a revamped kids area as well. Yeah, I forget what their kids area used to be called. But they're revamping the kids area. It's going to have seven new like little kid water slides called Salamander Sliders. Which I think is so cute. I just, I don't know. I love that name. Um, with gentle slopes and turns. Uh, Bluegill Lagoon, which will be, which they've labeled as an old-fashioned swimming hole. But it's just like a wading pool. Like, you can just hang out if you don't care for the wave pool and you just want to chill in the pool. This is where you're going to go. Um, hundreds of new seating options. People always complain that there's not enough seating. They've brought more seating in. Um. Also, they have, like, a younger little kid area that was previously part of Castaway Cove that they're calling Tadpool. I like the, I like the pun. I like the pun here a lot. I missed it. Oh, Elizabeth pointed it out. Pool For your tadpoles? Yes. That's, that's funny. That's adorable. Um, also, it looks like they're renaming Aruba Tuba to Riverbank Slide Out. Which isn't listed on the website, but it was listed on an info sheet. So, when you see Aruba Tuba, get a new sign, or you can't find it on the website. It is Riverbank Slide Out. Um, I was gonna say something, and now I can't remember. Oh, you know how when Camp Snoopy came around, people thought it was KI trying to rebid the golden tickets for Best Kids area? Yeah. If I was them, I would build a tiny train that just goes from the kids' area in the water park to the kids' area in the dry park. That would be so cute! <laughs> it would be, be adorable! So cute. And then you could argue that it's one connected land, and you could be like, look, Dollywood, we have the best kids' area, because we have and the it, little splash pad. That is That would be so adorable. And they can have, like, Snoopy driving the train. Yeah, although, I mean, I'm sure the investment for a train is way above what they wanted for this project. And it would also have to cross the other train, and it would be a logistic well, you just nightmare. just a tiny bridge. <laughs> just a tiny bridge over... The tiny bridge would have to be, like, super tall over... 20 feet tall, I know. <laughs> but it's okay, it's just a tiny bridge. Just a tiny bridge. Just a anyway. tiny bridge. Anyway. Um, yeah, I... I don't have a lot to say about this. Like me and Taylor said, um, we both have the same condition. Water parks are kind of not that accessible for us. So I don't feel comfortable weighing in on something I'm realistically never going to experience or use. I'll probably ride it once or twice just because I do enjoy water slides. It's usually just like if I go to a water park, I'm riding one or two things right at the beginning of the day. And then I'm like toast. Um, I went to Zoom Busy Bay like last week or the week before. Oh yeah. And we were only there for two hours and it absolutely destroyed me. I will say, if Kings Island is gracious enough to have a media day and invite me out for the media day, I would love to try the race coaster. But yes. I think that's logistically the only way that I could ride it. Yeah, that's probably about the only way that I could go. I could go, I could ride it once or twice. But yeah, if they were gracious enough to invite me that would definitely be helpful for me. But I want to be clear that's not a, a wink wink nudge nudge. That's no. just a practical discussion of how we could logistically ride that. Right. And we've been to media events for them before. It's not like out of the that's question. True. Yeah, like That's true. Anyway. Um speaking of wet rides at parks in Ohio. Great transition. Cedar Point. <laughs> no, no is... it wasn't. Don't give me that. No, that was a great transition, Josh. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Where's uh, the clapping sound? I, I need the clapping sound. No, that's and... not enough. <laughs> give oh, me my yes. money. Give him his Oscar. Oh. Ah, 
after Labor Day, Cedar Point will be closing Snake River Falls. That was wah, the year um, Arrow shoot the shoots, right? Yeah. Um, that was around the boat ride that they got rid of this year. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see what they end up putting on that plot of land. And it, will that be their 2026 announcement? I, uh, I don't know. I hope so. I think it's the logical thing here, and I'm not um, treading any new ground by any means when I say this, but that clearly opens up a moderate-sized chunk of land directly next to Forbidden Frontier, which obviously closed this past year? Yes. Was, was that this year? I think it yes, closed it last year. I could be wrong. I don't know. No, you're right. You're right. No? Yes. No, I think it was last yes. year. No, was I was I was there at Winter Chill Out when they announced it, and I didn't go this year. So yes. it, it closed last year. It's been sitting dormant. Um, I kind of forget this season has existed, to be honest with you. It's been a long um, season, but also fast. Um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously they're opening up land in that area of the park. Whether or not it's for one attraction or multiple attractions, I'm interested to see. I'm definitely interested. <clears throat> GCI. <laughs> Mock Water Coaster. Mock Water Coaster. GCI. Giga Dive. Gravity Group. That makes no sense in that I park. don't know. It was on their little thing. No, it was on KIs, wasn't it? I, I thought it was on both. No, I think the Tower Coaster was on both. Yeah, the Mock the... Extreme Spinner Tower yeah. Coaster. The Ooh, Giga Dive. Side, sidebar. Yes. Beast 2.0. <laughs> I did you see my tweet about that today with the I, survey that Wonderland did, and we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Yeah, I saw that. I also had somebody suggest to me that maybe they were like using Beast 2.0 to like see if people would be interested in a coaster with similar stats. Yeah, that's uh, Coaster Studios said that in their video when they talked about it, or as well as um, they also were possibly considering a wooden coaster on that plot so they were kind of priming for that but i feel like that's a weird way to go about it if that's what they were getting at i would I be also, interested in the coaster but not as an addition to the beast i don't know if this is a hot take or a non hot take i don't think king's island needs another woody i just feel like king's island is so good with their woodies that like yes i think they <laughs> pack it up pack we're it up. done <laughs> have a Hold good on. night everybody okay no well, king's island takes this... <laughs> king's island takes good care of their wooden roller coasters is what you're getting at mm -hmm. and i had to think about every word that came out of my mouth while i was speaking there. yeah um, okay see you see how easy I, it is I, josh I agree, but I don't see a need. I mean, there's already Mystic Timbers has amazing airtime. Yeah. Racer and Beast are classic Woodies, and then you have a uh, Woodstock Express. What's it called? Now? Woodstock Express. I went through like five names in my head. I'm like, what the frick is this thing called now? Um, Woodstock Express is obviously the smaller scale family coaster. Like, what are you gonna add back there? Uh, yeah. Especially to be right in a, like right in line with Beast and Mystic, I yeah. guess it would be kind of. I just think that they do wooden coasters so well that like I wouldn't be mad if they got another one, but maybe not in that plot. And I do think they need to come for some inversions and a modern launch. And hey, Josh, yeah, you know what else Speaking has inversions, of inversions and a modern, a modern launch? launch? Yeah, my uh, favorite probably... manufacturer. That's not actually my favorite manufacturer. One day I'm gonna like, not actually, but hold you at gunpoint and make you like give a real top ten. A real? I don't think I could give you a real top ten. <laughs> I Josh. know. Like I've tried. I said... Actually, I the other day I tried to start ranking my creds, and I just like I couldn't because I also have yeah, so many I've... that I want to put at the bottom that I'm like. Ugh. I've largely abandoned ranking mine. I still kind of, like, have a mental... Like, I know what my top ten are, if you ask me, but I don't, like... I used to actively update them, you know? Like, out to 25. And now I'm like, I don't really see a need to do this. I have my top five ranked. 
Okay. Can you guess what my top five is? Real, or are you putting Foff on there because you have to put Foff on there? Real, real, real. Uh, Wildcast Revenge. Okay. Um. Shoot. Um. We've talked about so... How many credits do you have? Like, 60? 61. Okay. Uh, Wildcats Revenge. Skyrush post-restraint change? Yes. I'm putting... Um... Wait, let me expand you. So I... Oh, okay. I thought you were flipping me off for a second. <laughs> no, Is I'm really glad you didn't four? guess number three. <laughs> yeah. Is that one... Okay, so that's one <laughs> and four. Okay. I'm really Wildcat, glad you didn't... Skyrush... Yeah, that would have been really funny. Um, that would have been really funny. I'm thinking. A Diamondback? Yes. I was hoping it wasn't. That's why I didn't say it. But I Orion. have such an emotional attachment to Diamondback also. On top of it having such great air. Like, don't hate on Diamondback, Josh. Gosh. Orion? Mm-mm. Orion's Mystic? a Giga. Mystic. So you're number two? Tell me you don't have... <laughs> no. Yes. No. Yes. Wildcat's Revenge, Foth, Diamondback, you know what? Skyrush, you know what? Mystic. I feel like that's a pretty I... good top five. For you. For me. I will accept this because for once in your life you've admitted Foth is not the GOAT. I love Foff. Foff is definitely my, like, zero, but, like, if I were I get realistically ranking, it would be my number two. You're gonna tell me Foff is better than Skyrush? Objectively, on paper, remove all emotion I from it? I enjoy Foff more than Skyrush, but I because... do really miss Skyrush. Actually, I might switch Skyrush and Diamondback. I have an emotional attachment to Diamondback, but, but Skyrush is so good. But you're forgetting to factor in. Is you enjoy Foff more because the nostalgia and the emotional attachment. I don't really have a nostalgia for Foff, though, but... Whatever. Whatever. We are so off topic. Anyway, Whatever. let's talk about... Open uh, Fury. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, no. We need to talk about Icy Foff. <laughs> icy... I will icy end the hot. recording right icy now. Icy Hot Foff. Icy Hot Shack. Yes, Icy Hot Foth, otherwise known as Alpen Fury, was Canada's Wonderland's, Canada's Wonderland's capital investment for 2025. Um, it will be two 18-rider trains with a dual launch, and the most inversions wanna... in North America at nine inversions, at least on a most launch? Most inversions? Yes, it's tied for most inversions with Steel Curtain. But Although, Steel Curtain Steel standing but not operating. Open. Yeah. Um, it's a premiere launch coaster. Shoots up out of the mountain a la Volcano the Blast Coaster. God. That was my house. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, that was such a pronounced ding dong. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, anyway. Yeah, so this was, I'm not going to say the layout was leaked because the leaked layout was actually wrong, but um, Premier Launch Coaster had been rumored for a long time. Mm -hmm. So this wasn't really a surprise. Nine Inversions was kind of a surprise. That was a surprise. I also think it's really funny that they're marketing this as like, the new tallest, fastest, longest launch coaster in Canada. The bar was on the ground. Hey, let them have their moment. Until literally a month ago, Canada's Wonderland still held that record. And you know With what coaster backlot? it was? With Backlot! <laughs> I love Backlot, but uh, that should not have the the record. I know. So, uh, but yeah, I'm excited for this. Very worried about capacity. Um, yeah, but... but hey, I want to talk about the trains. Because you pointed out that the trains look better. Slightly different? Yeah, so... I pointed it out, and then Coaster Studios pointed out um, a similar but slightly different thing. I noticed they don't have the triangles on the side. Yeah. So if you've ridden... Sorry, I just ate before we recorded. Um, Dog! (laughs) (laughs) That's an inside joke. Uh, So so if you've ridden 
Tigress or any of the Skyrocket 2s or Icebreaker, you'll know that the side of the trains have these big-ass triangles. Um, and in my opinion, that's the worst part of the trains that make it hard to get into. A lot of people disagree, but for me, that's the worst. Mm -hmm. These trains seem to have open sides, and the shape of the back is like concave more, so it looks like they're deeper seats, which hopefully should alleviate some of the congestion problems people have with them as well. Interesting. Yeah. We we famously complain about premier trains on this. We do. List, so. We might love Flight of Fear. <laughs> I was but... talking to um I told Orion about these trains this morning because I I texted him I'm like dude what's up with the capacity on this like am I missing something? And he's like well it could hit a an eighty second interval is what I'm looking at and I was like yeah but you have to remember that. There's no lockers at this park. It's all bins on the platform. That's going to slow things down. These yes. trains are notoriously difficult to get in and out of. I don't think they're going to be hitting interval. And he's like, yeah, those. I was hoping for redesigned trains because like, they're really tight. I was like, dude, they're an ADA nightmare. And even he's like, oh, I've never thought about that before. Yeah. They, they suck. Yeah. They're going to be fun. I was uh, can I just say like I know that that's not an ideal thing but like with Premiere I was not surprised that it was going to be like so low capacity. Yeah, was, I was, was hoping a shock for a third anyone? train. I was hoping for a third train is yeah. what it comes down to for me. Um which I believe this is going to be the only two Nah, it's probably not true. Um Obviously, they have a boomerang there and a powered coaster that might not have. No, the powered coaster can't because it goes through the station. Basically, everything that can have two plus trains at Canada's Wonderland, as far as I know, has three plus. So their newest attraction having two is kind of weird, especially when the Toronto Vaughn urban sprawl metro area is exploding in population and it's already the highest attendance seasonal park in north america yeah so like that's a really weird decision in my it opinion is but odd but looking at the layout conversely it would be kind of difficult to add it on their block zone so maybe it's a design flaw who knows um who knows i hope it works i actually do really want to go ride it though i you know, come after January 6th next year and you can hit up uh, Darien Lake, too. The Darien Lake's not open that early. Neither is Canada's Wonderland. Wonderland opens in April and Darien Lake opens in May. Okay. I'll, um, I'll come up next year. I will make sure I make a weekend to come up and hit the parks with you. Because I miss you and Kyla. Time. Um... On the other side of the coin, in the Cedar Fair launch coasters, there's one with some, in my opinion, really comfortable seats. Raptera! The merch looks name. fire. I do like I the merch. I haven't seen any of the merch. I like the logo, I like the merch. The name is growing on me. I did not like it when they first announced it, but it is growing on me. I have zero feelings about the name. Zero. Zilch. Fair enough. Um... <laughs> They have a story. Also, Alpen Fury also had a story. I just didn't care as much about that story. Yeah, I skimmed past the entire thing and read the ride stats. To be yeah. fair, it was like, I woke up, went, oh crap, it's the 8th. Cedar Fair releases their things at like 4.30 in the morning now. So like the first thing I did this morning was look at the stats. So I wasn't about to read two pages of lore. This isn't FNAF. Yeah, um... Alpen Fury, like, run down, like, it's, like, an ice village festival thing with some, like, ancient things through the mountain. I don't... And you're a visitor. You feel very lucky. You board a sled. You strap in, and it sends you off. And, yeah, it's not supposed to... Whatever. I want to put some, talk about something that's not on this list, on our list here, and it's total sidetrack. Epic Universe was seen testing drones, or we assume they're drones, that look like dragons from How to Train Your Dragon that fly above the park and they're huge, like dragon sized. It's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. It's, I'll send you the video after, but it's literally like a How to Train Your Dragon dragon hovering over the park. It's so cool. Dub. Love that. Okay. Anyway. I thought of that because I was kind of wishing that Alpen Fury would be like, 
you're a dragon taking over the icy village or something. I kind of was hoping for that. Maybe they didn't want to step on Leviathan. I don't know. Well, they have Behemoth Leviathan. I think it would work. Whatever. Not oh, important. was Behemoth also a dragon? Yes. Behemoth huh. and Leviathan are both biblical dragon monster things. Interesting. Didn't know that. Anyway, Raptera. Three inversions. There's going to be a lot of interactions on the pathway with the thing. Um, I don't remember any of the stats. This was last week's announcement. They also have dragon fire. Sorry. Oh. Gosh, Kim Josh, I've never to... been there. I don't know anything <laughs> about the park. And they have a... No, I'm kidding. I will be accepting applications for a new co-host. Please hit me up at Flight of Taylor. I'm just, just kidding. At Flight of Taylor. <laughs> just <laughs> at Flight of Taylor. At Flight of Fear at gmail.com. Fun fact, one time... <laughs> Um, I was putting the three of us on a media list, or I was asked for emails to put us on a media list, and out of habit, I typed flightoffear at gmail.com, which is not Taylor's Gmail address. And um, Taylor thought she got excluded from the media list when I the invites so went upset. out. And I, I, I like... had to message the person and be like, uh, I made a mistake. And luckily, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll say it, it was Ryan from Dorney, which he's super chill, so he got it fixed really quickly. But for like 20 minutes taylor's like they don't want me i I was just a little hurt i was like why specifically was i not invited but you two were it's a little bit funny it was a little Um, bit funny it was actually really funny once we got it sorted out i was just like josh anyway anyway uh, yeah raptera looks cool it does look uh... cool I've ridden Thunderbird once back when I was a GP, and I remember really liking it. So, And this is faster, because it's the fastest it's, and tallest it's, or longest or something. It's I not much faster. Thunderbird's st- I was going to say, I don't know Thunderbird's stats, but records are becoming marginal at this point. Like, Yeah. Except for Falcon's Fury, which is destroying everything. If but Falcon's even Fury Falcon's Fury's top exist. speed is like eight miles an hour more than um, whatever it's called. Formula Rosa. So sixty five miles per hour for Raptera. So that's a respectable launch. It um, is, yeah. Although it's a rolling launch, take it how you want. Um, I kind of wish they had a show building instead of a rolling launch, but whatever. Yeah. Um, um the tallest point on Raptera is going to be a one hundred and forty five foot wing over. A wing over, not a wing over drop. It's called a wing over turn, I think. I'm looking at the picture, and the picture just says wing over. I saw another term for it on King's Island Marketing. Basically, it's a wave turn, but really tilted. Yeah. Um, they have... Oh, that was something with um, Alp and Fury, an too. It had cool turn, elemental names for their elements. Um, Did it? Yeah, I didn't I really it was read just them too hard. Roll, or I thought it was just barrel roll after barrel roll after barrel roll after barrel roll. I don't know. I kind of <laughs> skimmed through it. Um, the only reason I'm remembering that um, Raptera has a unique name for one of theirs is because Kyle named it. Kyle from it's King's the... Dominion. The 360 Raptor roll. Yeah, which just looks like a zero G roll, kind of, or an inline twist, one or the other. Look, he also named the Orion's Bell on Orion, and that's just a helix. Um, anyway, what I care more about next year at King's Dominion, personally, is P305, Project 305. Oh, wait, we didn't mention that the stats on this are, this is an 89-second ride with only two trains and 20 riders per train. It's a short wing train. Okay. About the same length as, um, Alpen Fury, but more riders per train. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but, but only but yeah, by two. P3- anyway, go ahead. P three hundred five. P three hundred five. Wait, that's a short wing train. I. That's what I just said. Five rows. Ask I me. thought you meant short duration, not when you said a short wing, because usually wings yeah, are very no, sprawling. I, yeah, short train. Sorry. Um, yes, P three hundred five. Paint swatches. Uh, we expected this, but that's not why I really want to talk about this. Uh, have you been to King's Dominion? You've not. No. Correct? I've so, P three hundred five. And Tambili and the Reptilian Makeover and Reptera are all in the same little section of the park. 
And then there's always rumors that Anaconda is going to get torn out, which is in the same section of the park. The rest of the park needs love. <laughs> like, yeah. They're doing everything. Kind of like how Cedar Point seems to be doing, you know, um, everything in Frontier Town recently. You know, with the, a couple restaurants, Miss Keats, uh, Farmhouse, you had Steve, obviously, and now the thing's getting removed. Snake River Falls is getting removed. Um, the Snake River Riverboat got removed, which went goes right through there. And then you have, um, what is that thing called? People are saying Frontier Fling is going to be removed, which is the Sky Coaster. Interesting. And people are always saying that Mine Ride is going to be removed. So kind of similar thing with the King's Dominion. Is they're just doing everything in one spot. And I'm a little worried that the rest of the park's is not going to get loved. I just feel like it makes sense to focus on one area at a time. Maybe not over many, many years like Cedar Point yeah, is. Yeah, I, I agree. At a, yeah. Well, this has been three or four years in a row for King's Dominion, give or take. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I don't know as much as the executives do. There's probably a reason. Maybe traffic to that area of the park was low and they didn't get the traffic they wanted with you know, um, Tumbili for Is expected it? reasons. I threw a five, like, Thuzis love it, but GP don't. Yes. And so it doesn't get a lot of foot traffic, and maybe they're just trying Correct. to pull more people over there. Because it's definitely Goth possible. has terrible, terrible capacity, but still is a walk-on. Tumbili has terrible funny. capacity. And... And uh, GP love think... wings, right? That'll bring people over Which there. Which is funny. I One of my favorite things to do is look at GP comments on TikTok. Yes. And somebody said, oh, I wish... I, it's a multifaceted thing on a breakdown. Like, oh, I wish this had spinning seats. All we got is a Gatekeeper clone. And I'm like, look. First of all, not a clone of Gatekeeper. Not second of all. all. Second of all, if it had spinning seats, you'd call it a Tembili clone. <laughs> so... What? <laughs> that doesn't yeah. make any sense. Um, yeah. The only other park to talk about here, though, is not really much to call to write home about. No, well, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have left Carowinds for last. Sorry, Carowinds. Uh, oh wait, also they released P three hundred five merch at King's Dominion. Oh yes, and it's super tacky, but in the best way. Yes, like honestly, I kind of want to go just to get one, just because I don't know. And also, like, if the theory is true that this is just a placeholder for this year, um. It'll be like really exclusive merch because it's not going to be P three hundred five next year. If yeah, the rumors are true, about that. which the... I think it was, ha it, I felt like it was half announced that way, and then they kind of went back on it. Maybe like it felt when they announced like it was going to be a temporary thing, and then I looked for it recently and I couldn't find any proof of that. So it could be me gaslighting myself. I Maybe I don't know. We um, talk but... so much that I don't know what's real anymore and what's not. That's fair. Um, but yeah, Carowinds is getting a clone of Snoopy's Racing Railway um, at Wonderland and something called Charlie Brown's River Raft Blast. We don't know much about it. It's interactive. You can shoot it. You shoot can it shoot with at it and you can get on it and shoot at the people shooting at you. Yes, but that's all we know. We don't really yeah. know. Like, is it like a lazy river that you're on a raft? That's kind of the it's vibe I get. It sounds like it. But there's no like details or anything. Um, yeah. But we've been wondering where that other, where this coaster was going. Because we knew that there was another one out there, right? Yeah, um, we knew that they bought another one. And then I had, I've been hearing rumors of this for about a year and a half. And then they started clearing land. So I kind of assumed it was going there. But I didn't see like any leaks or anything. Like I mentioned, some of the other stuff. King's Dominion's layout leaked a while ago. Um, Wonderland manufacturer leaked a while ago. King's Island Master Blaster leaked a while ago. Carowinds, I didn't really see a leak. It was just one of those like, well, if the shoe fits, you know, they're clearing land next to their kitty area. We know they bought a clone. It just yeah. makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, not much to talk about with that, but that's what we have for at least the Cedar Fair parks. Six Flags, when is that? Is that start next week? Next week on the 15th? I believe is, well, I know is Six Flags New England's and the Great America teased a little more today with new banners in park. I think I saw 
Something might be next Tuesday, but I don't know what. Well, we'll Ooh. come back in a month and talk about it. <laughs> now that you say one, it's going to be two. Dang it. You have to say three and a half days. Three and a half um, days. We'll come except back. Except not because we're releasing this on Friday, so really it would be three days. Because Whatever. Not important. Whatever. Question. Yeah. Where's, where's our whoosh? Oh. Questions. Questions. Surveillance asks, as both Flight of Fear models near the end of their life cycle, what would you like to see replace them? I want to add an asterisk to this before Taylor gets a single word in. A a clone or a direct retracking or replacement is off the table for this. Okay, fine. We're going to get an Intamin Blitz that is themed to aliens. Also in a dark building. You lost me with the dark building, but I agree with the Blitz for aliens would be a good homage while making a good ride. Although, it's already I don't a good think ride. It, I don't... I'm ta- we're talking about a new ride, okay? Um, also, they're although, not near their end of life. They are. Um, I, I do wonder which one in the chain they're going to sacrifice first for parts for the other. Whether it's going to be like a Joker's Jinx Poltergeist or a Flight of Fear that's going to go down first to to keep the other ones alive now that they own what four or five of them four out of the five the fifth one's in china oh yeah um i i think see this is complicated because i think the fan favorite idea for vortex plot is a multi-launch coaster so i'm gonna say and in do you know how tall the building is by chance um i don't know how tall the building is i'm gonna go with the coaster itself is 77 so i'm gonna go with the building has to be like 100 at least okay so i'm gonna say a 85 foot indoor no lights alien themed rmc okay i can deal with that that solves the ability Everybody wanting an RMC at King's Island, you still get the homage with the theme, and I think an RMC in the dark would be insane. You hear that, RMC? Hit up King's Island with that idea for us. It's really funny that everybody tags RMC and things they want RMC. Like, the parks don't have to reach out to RMC. Yeah. Like, RMC is just just like, please, we'd love to. Exactly. That's basically, um... When I asked Scott at IAPA when I was interviewing RMC, like, what do you want to do? I, his answer was basically anything. <laughs> like, yeah. We want to do them all. We want basically. everything. It, okay. Kev. Kev. Cedar Kev. Cedar Kev. Kevin Gilbert, friend of the show. Friend of the Buddy. show. <laughs> Temporary co-host from time to time. Anyway, Kev wants to know, what type of food options would you like to see at your home park that are not currently there? I want, like, For... real Italian. Not, like, real Italian, but, like, I want a Fazoli's, but not a Fazoli's at King's Island. So Hugo's? No. Because when I went... The one time I tried to get Hugo's, they were only serving pizza. They're not. They're never only serving pizza. It's just everything else. Like, the pasta dishes are at the very end, and they look like sides, but they're actually entrees. No, like, literally all they had was pizza. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. I was so confident for nothing. Anyway, um, for Darien Lake, Kev, you've been there. Anything. <laughs> Give me something, man. Um, yeah. That's yeah. My answer. Or wings, because I really like wings. We have an anchor bar at Darien Lake, and that's the only thing that's good there, pretty much. Anchor Dorney? bar claims they invented the wing. Oh, you had anchor bar. Yeah, Dorney had jerk chicken wings for summer nights, and those were really good. And it make it makes me even more want wings at the amusement park. Honestly, wings? I we haven't recorded. Um, I haven't really got to talk about my Dorney trip, but I love Dorney, and summer nights was really cool. We did record. Oh. We just didn't release that episode. Yeah. Oops. Things happened. Things happened. <laughs> I'll clear Oops. an out of here question next. Yeah, I'll clear an out of here. When and if Falcon's Flight does open, do you think it will be plagued with downtime or do you think Entman will get it right? I'm going to rant about this one, so you should go first. I want it to fail. 
To be completely honest, I just want it to fail. Because the country it's in? Because the country, because I think it's egregious. Like, why did we go so far above and beyond? Like, it's not even fair. It's not even nice. It's not even playing I'm, for I'm fun. Gonna, I'm gonna hit you with a quote. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Anyway. No! My no. turn. Anyway, My go ahead, turn. Josh. I am sick of the narrative that intimate reliability is so much better. Let's let's take a sample of the new Intamin coasters. Velocicoaster. Yes, it's reliable. Hagrid's. <laughs> Pantheon. <laughs> Teutatis. <laughs> They're not any better just because Velocicoaster is better. I love that. Because I don't know who's been saying that Intamin's better. I've, I've, I've seen, seen so many people. Yeah, Actually, yeah, I've seen so many people with Top Thrill 2 be like, Intamin would have got it right. And I'm like, okay, but you're also the people that turn around and like when people are like, I'm an Intamin stan. I'm like, no, Intamin sucks. Like, what? You can't exactly. please enthusiasts. Enthusiasts are not pleased. No matter what so, you do, you're wrong. All that to say, especially when it comes to prototypes, Intamin does not have a record of reliability whatsoever. And I do not see this changing that. In a super windy, super dry, super hot, sandblasted climate. Yes. Don't see it working. <sighs> okay. Rant okay. over. Okay. Rant over. Execution Man asks, what type of coaster do you think Dorney needs without ruining the Dorney vibe? Uh, define the Dorney vibe, because I, don't think I love could Dorney, put but they're kind crazy. of all over the place. We can't put something like a Strata at Dorney. Like, that just would not work. Okay, that, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I have... Alex and I were talking one day, and he was like, I think a modern launch would be really good. I just don't know where I would see a modern launch. That is kind of something they're lacking. I also think a GCI would be really good. I think the, um, Premiere is working with, um, Schwart Anton Schwarzkopf's son mm -hmm. to do a new Wildcat 2.0. Like a bigger version of the, the, um, Schwarzkopf Wildcat model. Uh -huh. I think that would be a really good retro feeling coaster to add to Dorney because Dorney loves to lean into that retro feel. Right. Um, so it would still be a new smooth coaster, but it would be a very vintage feeling coaster. I think right. that would be perfect. That is, that is the Dorney vibe. I, I could see that. I like that. What's going into CPS water parking? Oh, Cedar Point. Hey, you didn't say that. That's from Mitchell. Mitchell asked what's Sorry, going Mitchell. into Cedar Point's water park next year cedar point hasn't teased anything have they like i know like I, what he's getting at is they removed a big thing of water slides this year yeah when we talked about this in that episode we never released oh yeah um i wouldn't be surprised if t uh top thrill 2 is the big marketing push again next year yeah and because at this point even if it does open before <laughs> the end of haunt you didn't market it this year fundamentally um, yeah. So I think that's going to be the big push for next year. They're going to get roasted for it, but I also think they're going to put in like a new slide tower or do cosmetic upgrades to the water park or something. Um, Remember when Adventure Port got announced and it was like way, way after everybody else had already finished announcements and everybody was kind of just like, huh, okay. No. Oh. Huh. Well, it was, like, after everybody had already done their announcements when Adventure Report got announced. Nobody, like, thought Kings Island was getting anything for 23. Oh! Yeah. Yes, 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 I think yes, that's yes, kind of yes, what's yes. going to happen with the water park for Cedar Point. If something's going in next year, they're just going to be like, hey, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's very possible. Um, Again, we also don't do water parks, so I don't yeah. know what could be... Zumbisi Bay... Again, I don't do water parks. They're getting rid of their dolphin dash, which is like their like mat slide that you like lay mm -hmm. down stomach on. And I'm curious what they're getting because I really like Zubizi Bay and I think they have a very good lineup for what for what a water park is. So I'm curious to see what they get. And one and more question. One more question, Elizabeth, friend of the show. What do you think the new additions were going to be named? Honestly, I didn't think River Racers at all. I didn't either. Um, I also kind of didn't realize that we were... Like, I knew they were, like, updating the kids' area from what we had seen online. 
Um, but I didn't think it was going to be a whole revamp. And I do think it's cute what they j chose to do. But yeah, I honestly like... They teased the race theme in their teasers, which they amazing did, job, yeah. by the way. I love those teasers. Um, I just didn't. She, she, she's your best friend. We know. Hey, but I do think she does solid work, Josh. I, I agree. I agree. She did. Um. Anyway, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be <laughs> river racers. Um, I just don't. Also, I thought it was interesting that there's no space. Like that was a ver that was a choice. Um. Oh, between the words, I'm like, yeah. What do you mean? It's not space themed. It's river themed. <laughs> <laughs> We're racing in a river in space, Josh. Obviously. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know a, what I thought. It's a, it's a cereal commercial. So, did you have any ideas at all? Um. Yeah, raft racers. No, I'm kidding. Racers, <laughs> oh. I really thought it was gonna be like something with racing in the name, but that was about it. That's all I had. I had heard something about Master Blaster, and I didn't really think about it, so I guess I'd have to say Master Blaster. But at the same time, that we already know Kings Island handles their woodies well, so I don't think they'd go with Master Blaster as the title of a ride. So I'm going to leave that one to the imagination, and that was a completely innocent sentence. Yeah, that was, yeah, I have no idea. We don't need an explicit writing. Okay, Josh, do you have any other thoughts for us this week? Yeah, I think you have to ask me a question. I do have to ask you a question. Okay. Um, Josh. Josh. Uh, Josh. Yeah. Taylor. If you were going to remove one thing from Carowinds, what would- No, Canada's Wonderland. What would you remove? Only one? Yeah. Oh god. Um Mighty Canadian Mindbuster. No. Cuz that could be fixed. Um The Mountain. I'm kidding. That would Probably... be funny. We're going to build something through the mountain, but we're getting rid of the mountain. They have a lot of low capacity not good dining options. So realistically, I think what they need is a dining upgrade after this coaster. So I'm going to just say one of the restaurants. Heck yeah. Obviously, the easy answers are Flight Deck, Time Warp, etc. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be out, think outside the box. Question for you, Taylor. Um, with the exception of a park that is not... Or, yes, with the exception of your home parks, what addition are you most excited for next year? Okay, so not Cedar Point or Kings Island. Correct. Um, probably realistically Raptera because I'm going to make sure I go to Kings Dominion next year because I was really sad that I didn't end up going this year. No, you're making sure you go to Canada's Wonderland next year. Ah. Okay, actually, I do think I'm a little <laughs> bit more excited for Icy Hot Foff. So, yeah, I'm gonna go. That's Jen's shtick. You can't take Jen's. I shtick. can. Jen supports my shtick, okay? Jen, stop supporting her shtick. Jen... No. Jen will support my shtick. Jen, come back on the show. I miss you. Yeah. That episode we that got trashed. Deleted, yeah. Yeah. I need to text so, Jen and get her on here. Is it Raptera or Alpen Fury? I'm gonna go with Icy Hot Foff. Nice. Cool. Cool. Um, well... Hey, Josh. Yeah? Orion's a giga. Orion's a giga. Orion's a giga. Quad down out. Quad down out. <laughs>